Hey guys, this is Jed Johnson from Diesel Crew and what I want to show you today is how we rate grippers uh, for use in grip sport competitions. And this is what you're going to need if you want to start doing this. First off, you're going to need a squat cage in order to hold the rating system. Uh, the squat cage, it, well the item has to be strong enough to hold everything and you can get into hanging up to 200 or more pounds from the gripper in order to rate the gripper at close. So it needs to be very sturdy. A uh, squat cage is a good item to use. So what we have here is what is often called a calibrator, but more the, the more appropriate term would be the rating device. And what we're going to do is we're going to rate the gripper at close. So what we're going to do is measure the amount of weight that it takes in order to touch the handles of the gripper together. Now in order to get a good reading, you have to follow the steps very, very precisely or else you can throw your rating off and you won't have an accurate display of how tough your gripper is. Now it should also be said before we get too far into this that the, the rating system that we use is not exact. It's not always exact. And what I mean by that is there are other factors that go into how difficult a gripper will be to close aside from just the rating at close. Okay, so some of these factors, this is not necessarily an exhaustive list, but some of the factors would be the knurling on the gripper. If you have two grippers that take the exact same pressure in order to close the handles together, one will probably be tougher to close if the knurling is bad, if it has smooth knurling. Whereas if the other gripper has cheese grater knurling and it feels like it's going to rip your finger skin off, you're probably going to be able to get a good grip, a better grip on that gripper and probably be able to close it easier. So, so that's one of the factors. Another factor is the bevels. If you have a gripper where the handles are almost straight down and then abruptly go to the end of the gripper, it's going to be easier to close that gripper than a gripper with bevels that are that are big, all right? So if the edge of the gripper has a big bevel on it, then you're actually gonna have to close that just a little bit further in order to touch the handles together. And when you're dealing with your with your max level strength in grippers, you know, even a, a 64th or a 30 seconds uh, of an inch is a long distance. So, so that's another factor. Uh, the, the spread of the handles, some grippers, the handles are wider than others. In general, uh, if your handles are closer together before the set, then it's going to be easier to close that gripper. If it's really, really wide, it's going to be tougher to close the gripper. Uh, we can talk about spring mountings, how, how deep the spring is set into the handles, and uh, even uh, whether, the gripper hand, uh, whether the gripper spring is rusty, um, you know, whether it's chalked up, whether the handles are chalked up, there's so many different factors going into this that you have to understand that the, the gripper rating is, is a rating at close. It's the amount of weight that it takes to touch the handles together without taking into consideration other, other possible factors. So in order to accurately rate a gripper, you have to first spray the gripper with a lubricant. So I use just WD-40, and I've got it over there, and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and spray all the grippers that I'm going to rate today, and then I'm gonna show you how to set the gripper inside of the rating device, how to apply the strap, and all of those things. So let me go ahead and spray these grippers, and we'll be all set and ready to go. Okay guys, I'm outside in my winter wonderland right now. And what I'm going to do, I've just got my WD-40 here. You can use some other sort of lubricants. Just this is what I have. Um, I mean, all you do is you want to spray the, the gripper spring, but keep it off of the handle. You don't want to get any on the, on the handle. So what I usually do is tip the gripper upside down and spray from the bottom. And then I'll also spray, spray on the inside. Okay. So then I'll set this down. And then I'll squeeze the gripper a couple of times 
just to make sure that the the grease gets inside the spring. Okay, so now that gripper can just be wiped clear of any oil and it's ready to be rated using our gripper rating device. Okay guys, so I've gone ahead and I've sprayed the gripper springs for all the grippers that I'm going to rate today. So let's go ahead and get everything set up. For, obviously you're going to need some grippers to rate. Um, also, you're going to need a loading pin and this will actually be suspended from the gripper handle. You need a strap that's no bigger than one inches. So this is a one inch strap. Um, and you can see that I've tied it in a knot so that it's in a loop. Um, it needs to be in a loop like this in order to be hung off of the gripper leg. And then you're also going to need some, some weights and they need to be rated as well. They need to be weighed on a scale that is reliable, a certified scale. And the best option is a post office scale because those are often calibrated against very strict standards. So what I do is I have actually over the years I've taken almost all the plates that I own to the post office to rate them in order to use them for, for grip contests. So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to put the gripper right here on the, the rating device in this small pipe that sits here. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the gripper and you're going to look for what's called the dog leg. You'll see on most grippers that one leg of the spring is going to have an abrupt turn to it. So it's straight, 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 and then it turns very quickly. As opposed to this side where it's a gradual turn, more of a gradual turn here. So this one is the dog leg. So we're going to put this inside of that channel to hold on to the, the gripper. All right, so let's get a closer look. So I take the, the dog leg handle, and that will be on the bottom. I pass that through, and when I put that through, I'm going to make sure that the, edge of, the end of the knurled part of the gripper is right in line with the end of this channel. So check this out. So you can see there that the end of the knurled portion of the handle is right in line with the end of that pipe. So that puts a portion of the gripper out over the side of the rating device with one handle parallel to the base of the rating device and the other one up in the air. Now what you're going to do is you're going to hang that strap off of the top handle. When you do that, it's going to pull the handle down. And you can see we have a number three gripper here. The handle should not be permitted to rub against the side. You can see there has been some rubbing here in the past. And what you do if that happens is you just stick something into the spring in order to rotate that gripper back away from there. If it continues to do it, then you're going to have to reset the, the handles of the gripper so that it doesn't do that. You just have to reposition it. Okay, so let's go ahead and see this, see a, a rating take place. Also, one other item that's very important with the strap, placing the strap in the right spot is key. You have to line the end of the strap up with the end of the knurling, with the end of the gripper here. Okay, so it needs to look something like this. If you have it too far back, that's going to throw your rating system way off because it's going, to, the, it's going to reduce the length of this lever and it's going to make it harder to close the gripper down. So you need to make sure as you're calibrating that the strap stays right at the end of the gripper handle and then pulls down. Another thing that we do while we're hanging this down, we don't want the strap to get caught on the bottom handle. So what we do is we use a, a spacer. Generally, most people just use a small piece of wood. And what you'll do is just stick it in between here once you have weight suspended from the handle. Okay? And what that does is it just keeps it spread out so that when the, as this is being pulled down, no portion of the strap makes contact with that bottom handle. So I've got one of these ratings going here. I've got a, 
Number three, Iron Mind Gripper in here. And I'm just going to correct that a little bit. So everything has been, has been weighed. So I know that the strap plus the spacer plus this carabiner, the ass hook and the loading pin, all weighs a pound and 8.7 ounces. I've also put on two 45 pound plates and a 25 pound plate. And those were 44 pounds, 15.6 ounces, 44 pounds, 14.6 ounces, and 25 pounds and three ounces. So the handles are not yet touching. So I've got to add more weight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take tens, fives, and I'm just gonna place them around the plates that are already hanging from the gripper. And then I'm going to wait until the gripper handles touch right here. And then I will have my radiant clothes. So this is a shot of the end of the gripper. It's about an eighth inch apart. And I've already got 155 pounds more or less added on there. So this is a pretty stout three. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna throw a five pound weight on there and we're gonna see what happens. So we're going to end the rating there, and we're going to take, take that measurement. So this is what we ended up with. We had the, the strap and the loading device at a pound, 8.7 ounces. We had a 45-pound 40, a plate at 44 pounds, 15.6 ounces, 44 pounds, 14.6 ounces. We had a 25 at 25 pounds, 3 ounces. Then we had a series of 10s. We had a one at 9, 14.4, 9, 15.6, 10, 0.6, and then 5, 2.4. So this is the 5 right here. So what that ends up being for a total is 153.68. So this uh, stands right in line with what a lot of the newer number 3 grippers are coming in at, right in that 150 range. Actually, it's a little bit... Um, on the tougher end. It's a good solid three to have. So it's not like you bought one that uh, is weak by any means. This is a good solid three to have. Alrighty, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. For tons of free articles on grip training, check out dieselcrew.com. And if you're looking to build world class grip strength, check out thegripauthority.com. Thanks and have a great day.